people no longer believe working hard will lead to a better life. Survey shows, okay. So, yeah, a growing sense of inequality is undermining trust in both societies and institutions, capitalism, according to a long-running global survey. Yeah. The day when capitalism falls is going to be an interesting one. Okay. This is 2020, January, by the way. No, it's the 20th year. Despite strong economic performance, majority of respondents in every developed market do not believe they will be better off in five years' time. Four years have passed, and it's looking pretty grim. This means that economic growth no longer appears to drive trust, at least in developed markets, upending the conventional wisdom. We are living in a trust paradox, said Richard Edelman. Okay, seems better. Okay, fine. Fears are stifling hope. Long-held assumptions about hard work leading to upward mobility are now invalid. Well, I think stuff, we, we are kind of getting more stuff, I, I think, a little bit. But most people are not seeing it. Growing trust chasm between elites and the public. 56% of the surveyed global population said capitalism in its current form does more harm than good in the world. Yeah, that means the majority of people would just switch out of capitalism, which is nuts. The implications of this are massive. This happened four years ago. Most employees, 83% globally, are worried about job loss due to automation, looming recession, lack of training, cheaper foreign competition, immigration, the gig economy. Yeah, this is not exactly freeing. This just means worse jobs. And automation is something that we as a society should celebrate. Not like there's, there comes like a, a washing machine and like, okay, that's it. Game over, man game over no that's something that is supposed to free you something you're kind of happy to see when the cashier sees the the automatic checkout it's like okay i guess i might as well order my coffin right 57 percent of respondents worry about losing the respect and dignity they once enjoyed in their country must be nice Nearly two in three feel the pace of technological uh, changes too fast. Australia recorded one of the largest declines in trust in technology. No, technology is fine. I don't trust the the people who are in who own the technology, who owns own the stuff. Australians were most worried about losing their job in the gig economy, followed by recession. I mean, you have no no stability here. So I mean, you all easily have a gig job because you're not getting a real one. Lack of training and the foreign competition. That's like, I'm not sure who's getting the training. I think it's just it's just done. I think that is just way in the past. I mean, apparently it's way in the past, like four years ago. If if you see a job, no one's gonna train you to do it. You have to kind of train yourself, if at all possible. And they might not even care about that. It's like they're gonna ask like, hey, have you worked a job of uh, of doing this for like five years before? And they're like, oh, I mean, I'm not. So, I mean, it would almost certainly would have to be a job where, like, there, it is, no one else is kind of doing it. So they have no choice but to get you. The study also found the growing trust chasm between elites and the public that could be a reflection of income equality. Well, no. We now observe Alice in Wonderland moment of elite buoyancy and mass despair. While 65% of the worldwide informed public said they trust their institutions only 51 percent of mass public said the same yeah. okay let, let's just check out what the people are thinking we're getting wealthier but not most people least a better life for employer shareholders this was my first thought too this is a recent topic by the way the war for hard work is <laughs> more hard work it's actually just a terrible strategy by the way because then you cannot encourage the workers to not work hard. Although, if, if the cause and effect is divorce, then it's just so terrible. I mean, if I make videos, maybe I can live off on the faint hope that I can live off on this in the future. But like, this is not much of a strategy for most people when like, like AI is coming up to take the jobs and like, maybe Indians are coming to take the jobs and like the robots are coming to take the jobs, they take the jobs, they order in the Amazon warehouses. And what is my hope? That I become a big YouTuber guy? Ugh. I guess even then, like, you can argue that the cause and effect is, like, 
it's at least connected. I mean, if I cook something, I cook more of it, like, I see the cause and effect. If I if I do some farming, I see the cause and effect. But, I mean, at, at work, it you might not see it. You just get a job and you get paid as little as possible. <clears throat> the system just isn't the same anymore. All the wealth is aggregating toward shareholders. One or two generations ago, if you work hard at a middle-class job, you can achieve good American dream with just one spouse working. Single-income household can buy a house, two kids, and send them to college, save for retirement. That's very interesting because in the past, they were like suggesting that, you know, even the 40-hour work week is going to be like a third of that. And that was assuming only one person is working. So effectively, I mean, just the, the breakdown, but like it was like 20, 20 per head. And now two people are working, probably got a working more, working more than uh, full time. Although in some countries, apparently like a uh, four hour work fee is a thing, but that's more of an exception. This is what drives me to wake up at five and go to work. Shareholders lives matter. <laughs> Rule of acquisition 91. Your boss is only worth what he pays you. I think is the employer doesn't I mean, the employee doesn't really have a leverage, right? Working smart works that sometimes includes working hard at the right time in the right situation. Working hard at basically any giant re retailer? No. Starting at, in the mailroom at some a large institution? No. Yeah. Upward mobility is not much of a thing. I have many years of experience that hard work gets you nowhere. It might be, well, I guess you, it might get you more work. Working hard leads to higher employer expectations, which leads to more harder work. Also, it kind of shows that you are really good for the role, I guess. In my case, they thank you for your hard work. They then promote. I mean, the only kind of thanks that I'm taking personally, this is a personal policy of mine, is just money, right? That's the only one counts. Then promote one who's been asking the boss while you worked. Or someone who you wonder why they are in an office and not a model? Yeah. I mean, you can speculate why they got hired. At risk promoting someone who might be a threat? Mm. Also, this is perfect. All you need is one guy working hard and you promote the Askasur to be their manager. It's perfect. It is a, it's a flawless plan. This is my theory for a long time. Whenever someone leaves, he gets replaced by one of the non frets he surrounded himself with. Yeah, but humans kind of work like that. Those will again surround themselves by less threatening people. After several iterations, the most incompetent people are on top. Mm. Hard work won't get you there. It's maybe 25% of the equation. Social standing and office politics is what will make you successful. Every day at work is like sitting in our poker game. Learn to play the game and not get played. Yeah, that's actually very interesting that... I mean, those who, pl those who play for big companies and those who actually get work done are not the same people. So essentially, they are terrible workers as long as you care about getting work done. <clears throat> I guess most jobs, that's true. I'm a firefighter, paramedic, and the job is physically and mentally demanding. So those who don't work hard on the scene and keep themselves ready to perform on a scene, get pushed out very quickly. If hard workers would make a lot of money, then farmers would be millionaires. I don't remember where I saw this phrase, but it makes so much sense. Work smart, search and go for each opportunity you get. Mm. I mean, many, if not most farmers in developed world are technically millionaires in the sense that their property and equipment is typically worth that much. That uh, doesn't mean that they can live like uh, the rich. I mean, one thing you can do if, if you are such way inclined then you can sell your stuff if you can and then you just invest it and just like kind of live off that or you can just do the degenerate thing and buy a bunch of houses and live off your tenants right <laughs> big companies seem to reward not hard work but sucking up as someone who grew up in working class surrounded by people who work more physically demanding but low paid jobs i think the thing that shocked me most about the corporate world is how little work people actually do the irritating part is that they act like they're working hard on mo the most important shit. Well, yeah, else they would get fired. It's important. It's like being in the middle of the Truman style performance that everyone is involved in. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just like pretend to work hard. I genuinely had moments where I looked around and thought, what the fuck are we doing? 
it's hard to work hard in the typical office environment. There's too much dev time. As you say, it's about relationships. The best situation to find yourself seems to be where you have a reasonable amount of control over your own schedule, remote work, so you don't have to waste away in the office where there's nothing to do. Yeah, remote work is going to be huge in the future because it is kind of an advantage to a company. And uh, trying to control your workers, just to get in your, your, your books and like, oh yeah, where you like see them, I bought them, is not that useful. It mostly just uh, the ploy to ruin their chances of leaving you. Well, I have masters and a decade of experience in my field earning less than five. I'm currently skipping meals so my child doesn't have to, despite strict budgeting. Both times I've been up for promotions at my current company and the, with the denials because management says they can't lose a high performer. <laughs> hmm. But what does that say about those up? I don't know where the goalposts are for proving hard work doesn't lead to success anymore, but I've got, got to be close. Working hard leads to you getting more work. Mm. After about 30 years of work experience now to my name, I can honestly say that rarely I've seen the hardest worker get ahead. The people that would stab their own mother in the back, yes. The person that did the intramural team sports that were put together by the higher-ups, yes. The person that went to the same school, belonged to the same clubs, yeah. The lazy one that had the right answer one time. <laughs> Heck, even the ones that did the bad room. Fast track activities, yes. <laughs> I mean, this guy is just perfect. I mean, when he scores, he scores, right? <laughs> working hard for an employer? No. Working hard at, on and for yourself? Yes. That's a very good point. Because in other fields, it's all about how well, hard and uh, smart you work. And you are kind of enthusiastic about putting in effort because... It, it gets you results. And that's why, like, those who just spent a lot of time in companies might be the, the worst people to just work with. I fully agree. You could get the best grades in your education and still be denied the opportunity because the hiring manager decides to, his, to hire his relative instead because nepotism is rampant and encouraged. Even if you do get the job, your hard work will rarely be rewarded with promotions or pay rises. You'll be just given more work to do instead. What little you do earn, you'll be spending on the ever-growing cost of rent, taxes, and rising fuel and food prices. Being exploited. They say that the nail that stands out is hammered. That's a Japanese saying as far as I know, and uh, not very flattering. What I found to be true is staying with a company multiple years will screw you. They always hire and pay better from the outside, so I job hop until I get the pay I want. Yeah, but like the companies might not like that. They say like, oh yeah, this guy didn't stay with a company for so long. Staying with a company gets you nowhere in today's era. Oh, I put in about two hours a day of real work. I've automated a lot of my processes, cut down what I actually have to do daily. That's smart. Just make sure you don't get caught. And if something new comes up, I do it manually, then spend a few weeks deciding the best way to automate or make it more efficient. I'm just not going to tell my employer that until I, uh, until I quit or retire, definitely not if fired. <laughs> this guy's a legend. Hard work just gets you more work. By the way, this subreddit is just jobs. Not not the misanthropic salty boss who... <laughs> no, this is just jobs. If you work for a company, I completely agree. If you work for yourself, it is the exact opposite. Yeah, that's a good point. 